Hi, Internet friends. I have just watched again Dr. Judy Mikovich. Everybody seems to be sending me this uh, copy, a link to that video this week, <laughs> like all of a sudden. Okay, so she clearly has some evidence to show the suspicion behind where this virus originated. And obviously there's evidence uh, connecting Wuhan, China with Fort Detrick, and North Carolina, and all these places, United States Department of Defense, and, and China. Um, so on one hand, we have the virus. And then on the other hand, what's been concerning me is the questionable death count. Because if you, you can do this yourself, go to the CDC website, search coding death certificates, COVID-19, and you can get like three different versions of how the CDC wants, or is giving instructions on doctors to code the death certificates. And it includes the word assume. I don't know how much I said in the last video, but maybe you didn't even watch the last video, so who cares? I just need to think through this verbally anyway because it's all, it's like Job, he's attacked from all sides at the same time. Um, so I think the vaccine is the end game. So let's just back up from there. Uh, the virus origination is questionable. The death count is questionable. And I think they're using the death count to scare everyone into their homes. Um, and the death count cannot possibly be accurate because go to the CDC website yourself and look at the instructions for coding death, cer death certificates for COVID-19. And it clearly says, if it's assumed to be, then go ahead and code it that way. And we expect you to code it that way more often than not. And if they were around anybody, you know, read it yourself. Not to mention, not to mention when I see a YouTube video that looks like uh, a doctor, he looks tired, he's still in scrubs, he gets home, he's in his kitchen in the dark making a video, that's going to say a lot much more to me. That's going to speak to me. I hate to give this away to the enemy. But that video, that type of video is going to say more to me than some big, fancy, expensive production. Even though the fancy, expen expensive productions are influencing and, and hard to keep from letting it influence your brain. But anyway, as for doctors making videos in their basement when they get home from work, there are lots of them. And, you know, not to mention... Well, I have people and healthcare friends where I live and they're laid off, you know. So, vaccine is the end game. The virus is questionable. Should sure exist. Is it killing all these people that they say it's killing? They're predicting a second wave, second wave, second wave. And the other thing that nobody's, well, they are talking about it, but we need to know the truth about it, about this, uh, I'm not going to say the words. You know what? Um, I'm going to try not to say these words for this reason. I made a YouTube video once on homeschool books and stuff, and I included, you know, my kids. That's right. I need to go back and have them read their McGuffey readers. The, those books are where they learn about character. Is in the McGuffey readers. I'm going to have my kids read the McGuffey readers. The next time I logged on to my YouTube account, I had a full page of videos recommended, recommended for me about McGuffey readers. So obviously when we upload this content, that's what takes so long in the processing when you upload a video because every word you say is being analyzed. So I'm going to try not to say the keyword that, um, yeah, is on this, on these papers here, but this, <laughs> that right there, do you see that? Okay, that's what this is about. This is another branch of what's going on that we really need to look into and find the truth. I don't think our personal communication devices are equipped with this right now, but it's totally possible that in public areas, like the ones that we're not allowed to go into right now, and the ones that we were kicked out of for a month or two, could totally be being installed right there. I've heard stories about, you know, white vans at night. Um, doing installation. I've heard they're not allowed to tell you what they're doing, or if you do ask them what they're doing, they're required to say, we're cleaning, we're cleaning, don't ask me any questions, we're just cleaning. And I've also heard, you know, spoken to people in my local area, hey, do you think this could be going on? I'm like, no, no, no. And then they get back with me and go, you know what? I asked and they say, you know, nobody's here but the electrical wiring people. So 
you need to know what's going on in your local education buildings where everybody goes to be educated. Are they, is anyone on the site running wiring, running testing? Okay, now when you get into, I, I'm tired of rumors and hearsay and, and scary technique stuff, I'm going straight to the source. So IEEE, Institute for Electronics and Electrical Engineers, I may have the e-words out of order, but it's called IEEE, and I was probably a member at one time. Um, so they're going to be involved, and I'm pulling papers on this technology. And let's just say one of the biggest problems they've had implementing this technology, now what it does, it enables a huge amount of, of bandwidth to flow like instantaneously from one device to another, like you would want, like Bluetooth, only much, much larger like instantaneous and you this would be cool for virtual reality like you know you're in a room and you want to you want to want all this stuff transferred between devices really fast this is the technology you want to use but what they have problems with is um, it's such a small uh, frequency wave and it will not travel far so we have like radio waves and TV waves to cover big spans of distance right and the closer you get uh, you need to, um, you want to use this frequency, well, they want to use this frequency, I don't, to move large amounts of data across a short space, but it will not go through things. It won't go through walls, it won't travel well in the rain, or fog, or mist, or cardboard, or those little mylar thermal blankets. <laughs> it won't travel through these things. So, they're um, design challenges to implement this technology. Very interesting. I mean, you just go through a few pages like of this stuff, and your five-year-old is going to go, um, excuse me, what about this? Big problem here. Okay, let's see if I can film and point at the same time. See, here's just a little sketch of uh, an interior room, right? And there's a person, and it shows how this technology, and they, they make these beams to where it'll it'll just bounce off things like a pool like like this is a pool table and the signal has to bounce around so if you're in the room the the transmission will occur very easily but if you walk out of the room they had to design this so that it will follow you the signal bounces around and it follows you out of the room now how did they do that they have to have something to lock on to you know, why doesn't it bounce out of the room and, and hit the couch or the cat or, you know, why does it, how does it know to come to the device that's on your head? Well, probably because you have a device on your head. If you have an enabled an enable device on your head, this is designed to lock onto that and follow you around so you won't lose your signal. Okay, so now let's look at another aspect of this. Unique oxygen absorption. So here's the interesting little graph right here. So you see, of all this range they could choose, they chose this one. And here, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. But when you get at this one, this is, that this equipment is designed to operate at, look what happens. You go up to almost 100%. 100% of what? 98% of the energy being put out by these devices is absorbed by the oxygen at this frequency. Okay, and this is when your four-year-old says, says, uh, who needs oxygen, <laughs> right? Uh, and sarcastically, <laughs> who needs oxygen? Because look, this thing is designed to follow you around and lock onto your head. And it, the oxygen absorbs all the energy. Now, first I, had, I was trying to figure this out because um, it can be complicated. Okay, and I'm like, well, 98% of the oxygen is absorbed. So, like, the oxygen goes away. But there's enough oxygen in the atmosphere to refill it, right? Or like a vacuum, it would just keep refilling because there's plenty of oxygen, right? But no, it's not that the oxygen is absorbed. It's the oxygen absorbs the energy. And that's a lot of energy. The oxygen absorbs the energy and is changed so that your body can't use it. So if you were, say, in a, like a public building 
that has this technology installed, maybe because it has 30 people in a classroom and needs to transfer large amounts of data quickly. And these um, directed beams are locked onto their heads, to the devices on their heads, their wireless, I don't know what you had, the AirPods, what's being pushed in the, on the commercials nowadays, I'm not even watching TV. Um, but you have something locked to your head to follow you around and to not lose the target. Stay locked on the target as you move and create it in a space right around the receiver, which is on your head. It's going to make 98% of the oxygen unusable by your body. Okay. So you really need to check out what's going on in these public buildings around your house. And in, in can you equate this to, would this in any way relate to um, the ventilators in the hospitals? You know, doctors are saying it's suspect because it's putting too much pressure into these lungs and that's not the right treatment and all these things. But are these ventilators, do they have like wireless, um, wireless alarm systems to contact the nursing staff or anything in case of a problem? Is, is it communicating wirelessly in any way? Uh, is that why the doctor on YouTube said 80% of the patients on ventilators die? Is that why the government pays $39,000 if a patient dies on a ventilator? What's going on here? So ventilators are questionable. Actually, public buildings are questionable and anything on your head that is wireless. You need to get that off. And also, these beams are really fragile and they won't travel through anything. So if you're in a building, wherever you are, grocery store, I don't know. If you start losing your breath, or if you see some, this is the new Heimlich maneuver of the 2020s. If you see someone suddenly having difficulty breathing, put something over their face, whatever you have, you know, a box of granola bars, I don't care, cardboard, carry one of those little thermal energy blankets, mylar things in your purse. Put, uh, block your hand, block your nose with your hand, do something. Get something in front of your head to block the beam and then get outside of the building as fast as you can. So that is your immediate uh, triage for shortness of breath. I'm not a medical professional. I am a homeschool mom. Oh yeah. It's down to the housewives to save the country. I'm kidding, I'm not saving anybody. I'm just showing you information and giving you um, ideas for things to go look at. So, tons of information, search, you know, IEEE. And uh, the name of this technology millimeter waves and terahertz frequency bands. Distance problem. Oh, the last article I was reading was on human blockage of the signal. Um, I didn't print that out though. It's on, it's on my computer, so I, I don't have it with me. Terrible. Uh, humans can block the signal. So I want you to think about someone trying to lock a beam onto your head, but a person is in the way. Hmm. How can we get people out of the way so that they won't block signals from each other? I know, let's do a little geometry here and get them to stand, oh, about six feet apart. That ought to do it. Now we can lock onto whomever we want. And, and there you go. That's a nice plot for a novel. I went through all that and my point was that I meant to tie that back into uh, Dr. Judy on the video that's circulating right now points out that we can't trust the numbers. I mean, it's not like the main thing that she's trying to say, but it's in there. You can't trust the numbers. You can go to CDC yourself, how they're telling to code the numbers. We cannot trust the numbers. Nobody has accurate data. How can you make decisions, good decisions based on inaccurate data? And so clearly, you know, the numbers aren't there, but suppose they want to get us really scared, how can they do that? How can they get their numbers? And everything I've gone through right here is a clear-cut option, one way, that they could get their numbers. And the symptoms of, if you have, if you're suddenly, if your face is in a little bubble where there's no usable oxygen, the symptoms you are going to experience sound just like the symptoms of this virus. So depending on the speed and severity, how soon they turn this on, 
how high they crank it up. I mean, you could just say, okay, right now, hit all these buildings at the same time uh, with sufficient strength to, to, uh, to get our numbers up. Or you could just stretch it out, or you could wait five or ten years. Or you could stretch it out and just make everybody a little sick and a little sick and a little more sick and everybody's sick. We don't know what's going on. So there's nothing saying that everybody's going to go return to these buildings in the fall and poof, they have their numbers and we all want the vaccine now because, oh, everybody's dying from the virus. But it's possible. And if it is possible, we need to start screaming and we need to start paying attention now. And we need to figure this out now and not wait for that to happen because that is totally unacceptable. I'm pretty sure all of you would agree. So make some phone calls, get your cameras out, talk to people, figure out what's going on. You all are smart. God has given you brains. We don't have to listen to people on the TV scare us half to death every day. And it's amazing if you just turn the TV off for a little while, you won't be quite so scared and you can look up and go, wait a minute, wait a minute. it sounds like we should be seeing dead bodies piled up on the side of the road, but I don't know anybody that's died from this. I don't know, I don't know anybody who's sick from it, you know? So we need to be sane and reasonable and use our brains and try and figure out for sure what's going wrong. Because if we address the wrong, if we get the answer wrong, if we don't find the correct cause and address that, just like Dr. Judy's saying in that video, if you don't address, if you don't have the right cause, you're not going to treat it properly. And you're going to cause more, more harm than good. And I think that's all I had to say. Sorry, it's not nice and well written and smooth, but it's out of my brain now and, <laughs> and I feel better. So thanks for listening. Bye.